Second, it allows users to set an aggressive buy core usage overclock while constraining the worst course. Okay, back to the BIOS. In 2018, Intel introduced Thermal Velocity Boost along with the Core i9-8950HK flagship mobile processor. Thermal Velocity Boost opportunistically increases the clock frequency above the Turbo Boost 2.0 maximum ratios, uh, depending on how much the CPU temperature is below the maximum temperature. The frequency gain and duration depends on the workload, the capabilities of the processor, and the processor cooling solution. With the introduction of Intel cryocooling technology in 2020, Intel also opened up the TVB configuration to motherboard vendors and end users. Obviously, with cryocooling technology, we have a lot more thermal headroom to play with to hopefully maximize our overclock and performance gains. You can use either XTU or, on motherboards that support it, configure thermal velocity boost from the BIOS. The easiest way to understand the thermal velocity boost configuration is by going from top ratio to bottom ratio. The first column lists the count of active cores, going from one active core to eight active cores with the 11900K. The second column describes the maximum possible ratio for a particular count of active cores. So in this example, the maximum ratio for one core active is 56, and the maximum ratio for eight cores active is 53. Since we keep a fixed base clock frequency of 100 MHz, this results in respectively 5.6 GHz and 5.3 GHz. The third column describes the first temperature offset point. When the CPU exceeds this temperature, it will decrease the ratio of the CPU. In my example, when four cores are active and the CPU temperature exceeds 64 degrees, then the CPU will decrease the ratio. Similarly, when the temperature exceeds 52 degrees and eight cores are active, the CPU will also decrease the frequency. The fourth column describes the ratio offset for the temperature configured in the third column. So when the CPU temperature exceeds 64 degrees and four cores are active, the ratio will decrease by one. 54 minus one equals 53. So the CPU will run the four cores at 5.3 gigahertz. The fifth column is an additional temperature offset point. The function is the same as the first temperature offset point. While on Comet Lake, the ratio offset for temperature B was fixed to one, on Rocket Lake, it is also now configurable. So in my case, when two cores are active, the frequency will be 5.6 gigahertz. However, if the CPU temperature exceeds 20 degrees, then the frequency will be 5.5 GHz. And if the temperature exceeds 45 degrees, then the frequency will be 5.5 GHz. As you can see, OCTVB on Rocket Lake still uses the by core usage method to set the CPU ratio. However, we also know that for Rocket Lake, there's this new feature called per core ratio limit. From testing with different tools, it appears that OCTVB also supports per core ratio offsets. The way it negotiates which ratio offsets to apply in a given situation is to pick whichever is worse, the ratio offset as determined by the by core usage or the per core ratio limit offset. The functionality to set OCDVB on a per core ratio limit basis is not exposed in the Intel documentation and is unlikely to end up in any BIOS. But who knows, maybe we'll see it pop up in the future. Okay, back to the BIOS. VF Point Offset is the ASUS name for an Intel feature called Advanced Voltage Offset. Advanced Voltage Offset is an extension of the Adaptive Voltage Mode that we're already very familiar with. It was first introduced with the Comet Lake processors in 2020. Before we can understand the function and the purpose of Advanced Voltage Offset, we must first understand what's the VF curve. An Intel processor determines a minimum voltage required for each frequency based on a voltage frequency curve. We also call this the VF curve. It does this for each core separately. This VF curve is essentially a table that maps the required voltage for a given frequency. This table is generated from multiple factory fused VF points using interpolation. The amount of VF points is not architectural and can change between SKUs. 
In other words, specific SKUs can have more or less predefined VF points. Also, the interpolation method is not architectural and can change at any time. The only requirement for the VF curve is monotonicity. Following a monotonic function, as a rule, the voltage for a given CPU ratio must be equal to or higher than the next lower ratio. So, the voltage for 48x must be equal to or higher than 47x. The main purpose of advanced voltage offset is to provide end users with a way to undervolt their CPUs at specific points on that VF curve. This is fundamentally different than how it was before. Before, if you wanted to undervolt your CPU, the only way to do it was to select adaptive voltage mode and then offset the entire curve by one single value. In addition to undervolting, this feature also allows overvolting. This is particularly useful when manual overclocking and when you're trying to increase the maximum frequency. Now that we know the purpose of the advanced voltage offset or VF point offset, let's have a look at how it works in the real world. Go into the ASUS ROG BIOS and navigate to the VF point offset submenu in the extreme tweaker section. We find a total of eight VF points. Each VF point has three parameters, a specific CPU ratio, a specific voltage and an offset. Let's take VF.5 as an example. VF.5 is associated with 4800 MHz, 1.263 volt and zero volt offset. In the ACES BIOS, the frequency is actually the CPU ratio multiplied by the default base frequency of 100 MHz. Keep in mind that Intel's VF curve is based on CPU ratios and not effective frequency. So it's more correct to say that the VF.5 is associated with CPU ratio 48X rather than 4800 MHz. This is important to know if you decide to play with base clock frequency, but more on that later. The associated voltage is the base VID and represents the minimum required voltage for a given ratio. For VF.5, the base VID is 1.263 volt. It is important to understand that this is not the effective voltage for a given CPU ratio at any time. In adaptive voltage mode, there are three steps to how your system sets the CPU voltage. First, the motherboard's BIOS tells the processor the current load line characteristics via AC-DC load line values. Then, the CPU will request a voltage from the voltage controller based on its own VF curve using the base VID configuration, adjusting for the current load line characteristics, as well as any of the other voltage offsets. Finally, the voltage that reaches the CPU is the requested voltage minus any undershoot or overshoot from the VRM load line. To put it in formulas, the requested VID equals base VID plus offset plus AC load line multiplied by current plus AVX guard band minus TVB voltage optimization. The readback VID equals requested VID minus the DC load line multiplied by the current. Effective voltage equals the requested VID minus VDROOP, where the base VID is determined by your specific CPU voltage frequency curve. The offset is a user set adaptive voltage offset. The AC-DC load line is determined by the motherboard design. The AVX guard band is determined by whether an AVX workload is present and AVX guard band is enabled. TVB voltage optimization is determined by whether thermal velocity boost is available and voltage optimization function is enabled. And VDROOP is determined by the motherboard VRM and the system load. If the readback VID is lower than the base VID, the CPU will dynamically increase the requested VID. The AC-DC load line characteristics are basically a way for the motherboard to inform the CPU about its design. Based on the specific motherboard design, the CPU will factor in a certain voltage droop when requesting a VID. The AVX voltage guard band ensures that the effective voltage during an AVX workload stays within the required range at all times to ensure stability. What's new with Rocket Lake CPUs is that users are given an option to change the voltage guard band when running AVX2 and AVX512 instructions 
using the voltage guard band scale factor. Thermal velocity boost voltage optimization is a little known feature of thermal velocity boost. When enabled, the CPU will gradually decrease the voltage if sufficient thermal headroom is available. There is no detailed documentation on how this feature works exactly, but from testing and empirical evidence, it looks like the voltage reduction is based on the difference between the actual CPU temperature and TJ Maxx. The VRM load line setting determines how much the output voltage increases or decreases when the CPU goes from a low load to a high load and vice versa. Simply put, a big undershoot or a big overshoot can result in an unstable system. So VRM load line helps to mitigate this problem. You can check out the article titled VRM load line visualized by Elmore Labs for more information. Okay, back to our VF point offsets. The last parameter of the VF point offset is the offset itself. This can be either negative or positive and ranging from zero millivolts to 500 millivolts. The offset adjusts the base VID. So if we use a negative offset of 100 millivolts for VF.5, the base VID for the CPU ratio 48X would be 1.263 volt minus 0.1 volt equaling 1.163 volt. All pretty straightforward. But Peter, what about the CPU ratios in between those VF points? Great question. As I explained before, adaptive voltage mode and its extension advanced voltage offset utilizes interpolation to determine the final VF curve. So assuming that all the factory fused VF points are exposed in this submenu, the base VID for CPU ratio 45X will be somewhere in between the 1.094 volt associated with 43X and 1.263 volt associated with 48X. Since we don't know the exact interpolation method, we can't accurately calculate this value. However, since we know the VF curve requires monotonicity, we can estimate it using a straight line approach. Offsetting either endpoint of the straight line will also affect the points on this line. So if we want to reduce the base VID for 48X, we can use a negative offset for either VF.4, 43X, or VF.5, 48X, or both. Okay, two more things, I promise. VF.8 is associated with what's called the OC ratio. It is the highest point on the VF curve and is usually associated with the default maximum turbo ratio. 411900K, that's 53X. When overclocking beyond the maximum ratio, we actually just changed this specific VF point. In our example, the VF.8 has been adjusted to CPU ratio 55X uses the base VID of 53X and has a positive offset of 50 millivolt. Interestingly, VF.8 is the only point on the VF curve where you can directly adjust the base VID. We do this by simply setting the adaptive voltage in the BIOS. Of course, this base value must be equal to or higher than the previous VF point, which is 1.458 volt for 52X. Also maybe important to highlight is that when people set the adaptive voltage mode in the BIOS, that setting only really affects the CPU ratios higher than the default maximum turbo ratio minus one. Again, the base VID for CPU ratios between 52X and 55X will be determined by interpolating between 1.458 volt and in this case, 1.543 volt which is the base VID plus offset. Last thing, a little earlier, I mentioned that the VF point is associated with a specific CPU ratio and not the effective frequency. This is very important when you're planning on doing BCLK overclocking. For example, let's say the factory fused base VID for 46X is 1.20 volt and the base VID for 48X is 1.26 volt. If we use a CPU ratio of 46X and a BCLK of 104.4 MHz, the resulting frequency is about 4,800 MHz. However, the base VID will still be 1.20 volt as it is determined by the set CPU ratio. So the system would likely be unstable. To avoid any of these problems, we can use another Intel overclocking knob called BCLK Aware Adaptive Voltage.
This feature was introduced along with the KV Lake processors all the way back in 2016. When enabled, the processor scales its voltage calculations for all the VF power domains and produces a voltage based on frequency as opposed to the multiplier. The VF power domains include the CPU cores, the ring, and the integrated graphics. Similar to the interpolation, we know that this feature exists and what it does, however, we don't know the exact algorithm for this scaling. Okay, back to the BIOS. For many years, motherboard vendors have tried to implement automatic overclocking features to allow for simpler performance enhancement. Very often, it's kind of a mixed bag of results because...